Okay, pH calculations are a way of determining how acidic or basic a solution is. And uh, we can start by thinking about just the pH scale, which you've seen before. If you consider zero here, we've got seven in the middle and 14, then what we see, um, if this is our pH scale, that this low pH is going to be more acidic and a high pH is going to be more basic. And uh, the pH scale is based on the auto ionization of water and it happens to be at a specific temperature of 25 degrees. And basically it just says that water ionizes to a very small extent according to this, below, this equation below. So you can see that water breaks down into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. If we look at our little Mickey Mouse picture of a uh, water molecule, really all that's saying is that it breaks apart. You've got your hydrogen ion and you've got your hydroxide ions that are there. So um, now if you were asked to think about equilibrium, which you just finished not long ago, if I asked you to write an equilibrium constant expression for this, that should be pretty easy. You would just say, well, that's going to be equal to the concentration of my products raised to the power of their coefficients. divided by the concentration of your reactants raised to the power of their coefficients. And hopefully you're looking at this saying, wait a minute, that's liquid. Liquids do not have concentrations. So you would just put that over one. Well, that's really what this formula is that we have right here. And it's just saying that the equilibrium constant expression for water is equal to uh, one times 10 to the negative 14th. It's actually a certain value. Okay, so this equation that we have right here, this is going to be something that you need to memorize. And our equation is just that our hydrogen ion concentration times our hydroxide ion con concentration equals this certain value, and that value is 1 times 10 to the negative fourth, so that's something you need to commit to memory. Um, and this little paragraph here just reminds us what we just said, that water is not part of your equilibrium constant expression because it's a liquid, therefore it doesn't have uh, a concentration. And also this value, we know that equilibrium constants change with changing temperature, so this is valid for 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, so now we have our first example, and here we're asked to find the concentration of hydroxide ions in a certain household ammonia cleaning solution, and that cleaning solution is 0 0.0025 molar. We want to calculate the concentration of the hydrogen ions. So we're given our hydroxide ion concentration, and maybe we want to even remind ourselves of our um, formula. And to be honest, we don't even need to write KW, so I'm just going to take that away. Our, um, here, let me do it this way. I should have written this one first. So here is our formula that when you multiply those two things together, it equals 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So there's our formula that we're going to be using. We know the concentration of our hydroxide ions. We also know our constant, so we can easily plug this in and solve for our hydrogen ion concentration. And that's just going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by our hydroxide ion concentration, which gives us a value of that. And we're talking about concentrations, so it would have a unit of molarity. So that's our concentration for number one. Okay, as you can probably tell, let me just flip back, lots of times we are going to work with values like this, where it becomes a little cumbersome to work with these really large numbers or really small numbers. Um, it's really going to be more small numbers. So it, for that case, it, it makes a lot of sense for us to work with logs. So since the concentrations of the species we've been talking about are usually quite small, it is more convenient to use a logarithmic scale. Um, and this is going to be the pH scale. There's also a scale which we will be using called the pOH scale. And both of these are defined as follows. And again, this is another set of formulas that you will be responsible for knowing. 
and um, because we don't normally work with this so much, let me go ahead and make a note of how we would change this around. This is how you would go, the formula that's given to you, that's what you would use to solve for pH or pOH, but if you wanted to solve for the hydrogen ion concentration or the hydroxide ion concentration, try and remember your math skills here. This is what you would do. You'd change it around and say that your hydrogen ion concentration is going to equal 10 raised to the power of negative pH. And you actually have to go through that calculation. You can't just leave it written like that. And then your hydroxide ion concentration would be equal to 10 raised to the power of negative pOH. So all of these formulas you should be familiar with. And then the easiest one of all is just that when you add pH and pOH together, they should equal 14. So that gives us that pH scale that we originally talked about. So next example, here it asks, uh, what is the pH of neutral water and what is the pOH of neutral water? Well, it's neutral, so we know that that just means um, the pH is going to be 7 for both of those um, because we know hydrogen ion concentration equals 1 times 10 to the negative 7th molar if it's neutral. Um, it's asking for pH. Maybe you could think of it in this term first if you wanted thinking about your concentrations. And then your hydroxide ion is also equal to that. That's what it means for it to be neutral, that you have the same number of ions for each of those. And if you were to plug this into your log, your, your, the log of these values, that would give you your pH and your pOH respectively, which would be equal to 7. So a little reminder about math also that if you were to look at this value right here, because you have a coefficient of 1, the negative value of your exponent is equal to your pH or your pOH if you're work working with hydroxide ion concentration. So the negative value would be equal to that exponent. The negative value of your exponent would be equal to your pH or your pOH. If this value right here is not a 1, then it's going to be within 1 of that, but it's not going to be equal exactly. Um, it's not going to be a whole number anymore. Okay, next one. Here we have, uh, we're given the concentration of hydrogen ions in a newly opened bottle of wine is a certain molarity. Only half the wine was consumed and the rest was left open to the air for a month. The remainder was found to have a hydrogen ion concentration of a different molarity. We want to be able to calculate the pH of the wine on both those occasions. So, our first one. Here, we're going to calculate pH. We remember that that's equal to the log, the negative log, of your hydrogen ion concentration. And we know in our first situation, it tells us that it's equal to 3.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. So now it just becomes time for you to practice and make sure you know how to plug that into your calculator, and you should get 3.49. What I was just mentioning on that last slide is that because this value is not a 1, my pH is not going to be 4, but it's going to be within 1 of 4. It's going to be pretty close. So that's maybe a good way for you to just make sure that you're um, plugging things into your calculator well. 3.49 sounds very plausible when I look at that value right there. And then if we were to do the same thing after however long a month has passed by, we see that negative log of our hydrogen ion concentration, so negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative third, well, I can do this without even using my calculator. That's going to equal 3 because this is a 1. Therefore, my, my pH is going to be the negative of my exponent, which is just 3 in this case. Okay, example number 4. Here it says that the pH of rainwater collected in a certain region of the United States, northeast, U.S., sorry, U.S., northeast on a particular day was 4.82 calculate the hydrogen ion concentration of the rainwater. These aren't tough problems. Maybe the toughest thing is just trying to figure out what formula to use. So I know that my pH 
is given to me right there. So if I want to figure out my hydrogen ion concentration, I just have to look back at those four formulas that I was given, which you can easily scan on the front side of your paper. And you're probably looking at this one, saying, I want to calculate my hydrogen ion concentration. Well, I know that's going to be equal to 10 raised to the negative pH. So really, I guess, thinking of it this way, there's really six formulas, even though this one, hold on, let's make it come up again. There we go. So here I'm saying that this was really two formulas, but if we think about how we changed it around to equal the concentration of the ions, you can think of it as six formulas. So we wanted to calculate the hydrogen ion concentration, so we just have to plug it into this. And we get 10 to the negative 4.82. So plugging that in, there is your value. Easy stuff. Okay, next one. Here we're given a pH. Uh, no, I'm sorry. We're calculating the pH of a concentration of 1 times 10 to the negative third molar hydrochloric acid solution and a 0.02 molar sodium hydroxide solution. So we want to calculate um, both of those. So for our pH, I'm sorry, for our hydrochloric acid, we can uh, say that our pH is equal to the negative log of your hydrogen ion concentration, which is 1 times 10 to the negative third. And that's going to, even without our calculators, we know this one, that's going to be equal to 3. But double check, convince yourself, put it in your calculator. And then um, I guess there's something I should point out here. That when we're calculating pH, if it gives me this concentration for an acid, essentially it's telling me that this is the concentration of my hydrogen ions. However, when I look over at my next one and it gives me this value, this concentration for my sodium hydroxide, so it's giving me a concentration for um, a base, it's not telling me my hydrogen ion concentration. Instead, this is telling me my hydroxide ion concentration. So that's going to be pretty important. Another part of this that's pretty important as well is the fact that I can look at this and realize that this is going to be a strong acid and this we know is going to be a strong base. So because of that we can just use our pH calculations as is. Later on, I think it's um, tomorrow, we will go through and do some calculations with weak acids and weak bases. So for our hydrochloric acid, it was just that simple. When it gave us our concentration, it was giving us our hydrogen ion concentration. So that's what we plugged in. But for our sodium hydroxide, if I'm given my hydroxide ion concentration, there is no formula. Look back at those six formulas. There is no formula that goes back and forth between hydroxide ion concentration and pH. So you have a couple different options. I'm going to go ahead and choose the option of pOH equals the negative log of your hydroxide ion concentration. Remember what we did here was we calculated pH, which is the negative log of your hydrogen ion concentration. So now for my sodium hydroxide, when I plug this in, I'm going to get that it's equal to the negative log of 0 0.02. And when I calculate that, I get 1.7. It is worth noting, again, that that's my pOH. That's not what the question asked for. So now if I want to find pH, you probably know what to do. You would just say that your pH is equal to 14 minus 1.7. So I'm just, remember the two of those added together would equal pH, um, yeah, pH value. So, um, or I'm sorry, they equal 14. So when I subtract this, I get 
That is one way to go about it. Maybe you wanted to do it differently. Maybe you looked at this and said, okay, if I know my hydroxide ion concentration and I want to determine pH, well, there's another route that you could have taken as well. You could have used your hydroxide ion concentration to calculate your hydrogen ion concentration. So you could have said that this equals 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by your hydroxide ion concentration. And you could have gotten 5 times 10 to the negative 13th. Then maybe you would have said that your pH equals the negative log of that value. And again, you would have come up with exactly the same answer. So the thing to notice from this second part here is that there was more than one way to go about it, but each way took two steps, two formulas to find that correct answer because we're looking for pH of a base of hydroxide ions. Okay, last one. Okay, skip it. Where is it? I must not have put it in here, but that's okay because we can make it happen. Um, let me just kind of point this out first. This is just a little scale showing the differences. You can stop and stare at it if you want. Um, let's go ahead, this last one, which I failed to put in, it says that we want to go ahead and um, we have a solution that has a pH of 5.79. Sorry, I can't write this high. pH equals 5.79. And the question is, to calculate in order the hydrogen ion concentration, then the hydroxide ion concentration, then the pOH, and then the pH, using only the information from the previous step. So in doing that, we're going to start by saying that we know the pH and we want to calculate our hydrogen ion concentration. So our hydrogen ion concentration is going to be equal to 10 raised to the negative pH. Take some time and look at it and make sure you knew what formula to use. So that's going to be equal to 10 raised to the negative 5.79, which equals 1.62 times 10 to the negative 6 molarity. Next step is to calculate hydroxide ion concentration using only our hydrogen ion concentration. So for that one, we would have to use that first equation that just says the two concentrations multiplied together would equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. So we're just going to say 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by that hydrogen ion concentration. And for that, we get 6.17 times 10 to the negative 9th molarity for our hydroxide ion concentration. Next, we want to determine our pOH based only on our hydroxide ion concentration. So that's going to be equal to the negative log of our hydroxide ion concentration. So negative log of 6.17 times 10 to the negative 9th. And that value equals 8.21. Maybe you want to stop for a second and say, does that seem reasonable? Yep, that seems reasonable. And then the last step is to calculate pH based only on pOH. So that's going to be equal to 14 minus your pOH. So 14 minus 8.21. And yes, we have come full circle and come back to our pH of 5.79. That is how you go about pH calculations.